So let's start. Uh, yeah, in this talk, I will talk about uh, something very practical. We'll talk about the latest, latest development of the on top system. As you can see, it's a joint work of many people. So it's big teamwork. Okay, so what is uh, VKG or OBGA? So we are back to talk here, we are talking about accessing data as Magdalena has already explained. So in many cases, you can just uh, access the data through ontology, so-called ontology needed query answering. It has been well studied. Uh, well, in this setup, we are also considering there we have some mapping inside. In this, in this scenario, we consider data not necessarily stored at the trust box. We are using mapping together with some data sources to populate this virtual A box. Uh, in this, this setup is normally called ontology-based data access. But we started to rebrand uh, our solution instead of OBD, we also call it uh, virtual knowledge graph, depending on the audience. Uh, just some disclaimer, uh, some people were not very happy about this rebranding, but the situation is that we are not only talking to DL people. If I'm talking to DL people, I'm very happy to stay with OBD, but if I also need to talk to other, in particular industrial people, OBD sounds a little bit scary to them, to be honest. So um, in the meanwhile, this knowledge graph becomes very popular. So we started to also use the VKG as our branding. So depending on the audience, depending on the scenario, but on the system side, I would slightly prefer to use VKG instead of OBDA. Okay, so yeah, so VKG or OBD has already been a mature technology since roughly 10 years. There are several implementations around in the community like on top Moth, Mastro uh, from the university, also that we have Stardog, UltraRipe, and Oracle from the company initially. Uh, both, as far as I know, both on top and Mastro has also been commercialized in UltraRipe as well. So it's a really big community there, and there are at least these systems. There are also other systems we did not mention here. In any case, so um, um, it's already a big community there, and in particular, this talk I'm talking about on top. So on top is our system. We have been developing for many years uh, from the University of Bolzano here. And our goal is to be com compliant with all relevant semantic web standards like RDF, R RDF and RDFS, OpenQL for the ontology language, HTML for the mapping, and Sparkle for the query language. And uh, we also want to connect to all major relational databases like Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, and also some databases for data federation, like TA, Dreamy, and Denodo. The last three can be used to connect multiple data sources and expose them as unified database. It's called data federation. It's also very useful in practice. And the system is open source and released uh, under a particular license. So essentially you can use whatever you want, just to make sure that you say you are using on top, and that's it, essentially. Okay, so let's start to briefly recall the history on top, then let's discuss some new features and new development. So the system has been developed uh, um, spent over the past decade. It was a really great challenge and a great adventure because you need to understand the both the theory behind it and you need to develop engineering solutions to address them. Initially, this was started as a PD work of Mariano uh, in 2009. At that time, some standards were there, but not quite ready. If you compare, Spark, the first version of Sparkle was released uh, one year later, and O2QL and RTML was released three years afterwards. So it means that at that time, the research direction was uh, quite, uh, uh, had a much stronger research flavor other than just to be compliant with some already established standards. So at that time, the research was focused more on the conjunctive query, or uh, actually using conjunctive query as a query language, and in our development, we were using the nine recursive data log as a call data structure, and it was working perfect nice in our setting because UCQ can be can be considered naturally as a nine recursive query, nine recursive data log, and mapping as well. You can just mix them, and you can do some cool reason. Uh, very convenient. However, by, while the time flies, we understand there are some issues. So the last version on top was in 2018, uh, 16. And afterward, in the meanwhile, actually, we started to develop the second version on top, which is internally called version two. While we are working on it, we found more and more issues. In particular, our goal is to try to be compliant with Sparkle and RTML. And Sparkle, Sparkle itself is actually not, you, you can you can somehow encode Sparkle into a, a data log program with some navigation. It's possible, but it's quite 
awkward, to be honest, if you want to use it as a data structure for implementation. Why? Because as we can already observe, Sparkle is based on algebra, which goes much beyond the conjunctive queries. Also some, some random monotonic features like optional and minus, uh, so you can model them through some fragment or data log, it's possible, but it's just awkward. Uh, and there are also some more tricky things, like if you want to use uh, some other modifier like distinct, also there are some operators to do aggregation, you can do group by, and you can do some average or count whatever. And uh, to make it more interesting, if you start to think about our solution of query writing, we start from Sparkle, and we translate it into SQL. And then they are di quite different uh, in how we handle the typing. In Sparkle, everything is dynamic, and in SQL, everything is static. So in RDF, you can have for one particular property, you can associate to all different kinds of literals with different types, but for database, you can only have one type per column. So there are a lot of tricky differences you have to address. While our lesson is that uh, if we just use a, uh, data log as internal representation, uh, it's quite challenging. So we, we, at some point, we give up using the data log as a code structure for on top. So that's the story of, of, of on top v2, never released, because it never reached the, the level of we want. So in the meanwhile, we are looking for new solutions. Actually, the solution concept is quite easy, because what we are doing now is we start from Sparkle, and we eventually want to get to SQL. And both of them have uh, algebra flavor. So our solution is to simply just introduce a relational al algebra, kind of relational algebra, tailored for Sparkle and for SQL. Uh, we have published this paper about the optional, how to handle optional. There we are still using the, the relational flavor in the paper, but uh, that's already reflected what we have in our mind. So we have a kind of unified algebra, we call it the intermediate query or IQ. Sorry, we should yes. come to an end soon. Okay. Uh, one minute or so. Okay, enough. Okay, I have this IQ, so we have, can use IQ to rewrite the whole system. Okay, then eventually we use on top, in on top V3 and V4, we re rewrite the whole, we have rewritten the whole system mm, and eventually also just released a newer version very recently, stable version. So it has been uh, improved a lot in terms of compliance with standards and most of the Sparkle features are supported and has been downloaded for many, many times. I just took a screenshot before the meeting, so it already been downloaded for more than 35,000 times and it has been used in many use cases. You can read the paper we have written. And there are quite some research projects are based on, on top, some European, in particular have big European projects and uh, also some quite some commercial adoption of the system using different uh, uh, scenario. In particular, we have also a paper recently published together with Bosch, yes, WC. And uh, there's another quite interesting work together with Ceres. We can talk, we have a university analytic platform. And last but not least, let me mention our effort in commercializing the system. So we have set up a, a spin-off of the university uh, last year as the first spin-off of the university. So there we are also doing some additional development and we are we are offering technical service and consulting. So with this, we can make the development uh, much more sustainable. That's it. So I'm looking for questions.